have blessed us to be in this place, this place of worship, this place where we draw near to you. Father, we pray that you would bring our thoughts into the center of your will and let our hearts be open to receive the engrafted word of God with gladness. Lord, we offer with the fruit of our lips a sacrifice of praise. We bless you for all that you have done for our benefit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
feels a little different back here. <laughs> I'm usually right up front. But uh, we welcome you to experience God's presence. That is the whole entire purpose and reason that we gather in this place, is to experience the presence of God. So that no one goes out of this place disappointed, feeling that they did not receive what they desired from the Lord. God is here and we welcome you into his presence because we believe that if we gather in his name, what is the assurance? That he's there, that he will be here to meet with us. Welcome to the perfect church. You've been looking for it all of your days. You've arrived to the perfect church of imperfect people who serve a perfect God to meet all of our needs. So we welcome you. If you're visiting with us for the first time, well, we know that it won't be the last because you've come into a place where you feel the presence of God. And for those of you that are guests, uh, we'd like for you to register uh, your name and phone number so that we can get in contact with you and send you information concerning uh, what we're doing as far as ministry in the community and, and abroad. So we welcome you here and uh, we hope that uh, you feel that you have received what your soul desired. Not necessarily what your flesh desired, but what your soul desires. And we believe that God is going to do that for you because he's just that kind of God, right? He meets us at the point of our needs. So I'm sure that your needs will be met this morning, and we thank God for it. Just take a look at the wonderful spray that we have this morning. Beautiful job, beautiful job that the florist is doing. And uh, we recognize that this is uh, a gift to the community, to you and I, uh, from the Catholic Church and our brothers and sisters there that we fellowship together in this place. So uh, we are thankful for that. Want the ladies to remember something is going to be happening Tuesday. I wonder if you know what it is. The ladies will be gathering Tuesday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 4 and fellowship. Don't you love to see ladies fellowshipping? Yes, because when the ladies fellowship, they bring goodies too. They don't want anyone to be deprived of their needs. And sometimes their needs are more than we can bear. <laughs> but anyway, we praise God for the ladies that will be gathering together in the conference room and also bring your, your appetizers, your finger goods, and uh, the best people to make them is you. Amen. If you love it, everybody else will love it as well. So uh, do come together, and there will be opportunities to share, and uh, I think that the ladies are getting to know each other because they're sharing their life experience together. And that is so important that we get to know each other because we share our stories of, of life's experience. Um, if there is no further announcement, and I don't see any other announcements, I just want to make you aware that October is our month of revival renewal and reunion. Now this is foreign to some people because if I know we've never had a revival in the chapel. This will be our first revival. It's going to be a month-long revival and uh, we want you to begin to start praying for revival and renewal and reunion. And I believe that God is going to really, really bless us and he might even choose to pour out his spirit upon us. Who knows? But if we gather, we know that the scripture says, they that hunger and thirst shall be what? Disappointed? No, they're going to be filled with the righteousness of God. So 
without any further to do, I am so blessed and honored and privileged this morning that we have with us one of our missionaries. And because of your love to the Lord and your gift to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we appreciate your gifts that you give to the chapel so that we could reach people uh, beyond our borders. And uh, we have with us this morning Eric Unruh. You know him. He's been with us for a number of years. And he wants to share with you concerning updates. And I'm excited because I want to see what God is doing in Colorado. I know that prime time is there, but I also uh, Chai Alpha Ministries are there. Did I, did I, do you know who prime time is? Yes. Okay, all right. So uh, <laughs> he works on one end and he works for the kingdom of God. Eric, will you come at this time? God bless you. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How's that? Is that better? Okay. Yes, that's right. Um, I live in Boulder, Colorado. Um, we are on everyone's news headlines these days because of Coach Deion Sanders. And uh, yeah, we keep praying somehow that we'll run into him and, um, you know, get him to lead a Bible study with us so that, you know, we can kind of take over the whole city uh, with him. But um, yeah, we're, we love living in Boulder. They call it San Francisco of Colorado. Uh, so yeah, it's a beautiful place. Everyone wants to live there. It's really expensive and lots of other reasons. Maybe you can form your own opinion. I don't know how you feel about different aspects of San Francisco. But um, we have been there for a year and a half, and we are so thankful that we, um, through the faithfulness of God, have been able to live within the city limits. Um, and a large part of that is because of your generosity to the missions budget, uh, which we receive as missionaries in Boulder. Many people told us that we would never be able to live within the city of Boulder on a missionary salary, um, but God has been faithful, and we do. We live a short bike ride from the university campus. And this, um, on one hand, it allows me to frequent the university and engage with the student population. Uh, I show up with just a simple prayer of, Lord, help me to be faithful to the opportunities that you present to me today. And help me to have the strength and humility to represent Jesus well. And that looks all different ways. Um, there's one student who is part of the uh, Chicano Latino um, club that I know at this time he's going to be at his booth and we talk and we talk about social justice and all, all these other things and um, I get to interact with him. But it also means that because we're so close to the university, we are able to open up our homes. Um, I live within a few minute walk of the rest of our six teammates. Um, we all run the ministry together for the university students. Um, and our homes are often frequented many hours throughout the week by students just stopping by saying hello. Um, one student in particular has come to my home, um, I want to say, one to three times a week this summer after his uh, shift in the dining hall on campus. He is an international student from India, um, and he was an orphan for most of his life. And he has experienced an entire life of abuse and neglect and um, was an alcoholic, grad student when we met him and he was baptized earlier this year um, and as a profession of his faith in Jesus as his Lord and Savior and he's a new creation right yes. that's what the Bible says Absolutely. and sometimes it's hard for all of us to live in that new creation even though it is real and he still has trauma and all these things that he's working through 
Uh, but when he comes through our doors and he gets to play with our children, he says that his therapy, his best therapy in the world is holding our nine-month-old baby. And he just feels her against his heart and all his cares and worries go away. So we're so thankful for him. He's become a dear friend to us, um, as tiring as it may be to interact with him. Uh, he gets to witness our parenthood. Um, he gets to see what it's like to, to have parents that he never had. Um, and we just love being able to open up our doors to him and receive him. He and another student will be uh, student leaders this fall. Um, uh, two young men who have decided to go through a discipleship program that we have and um, have committed to say, yes, I want to share what I've been given. When I enter um, my classes this August, which is just coming up, um, and you can be praying for us, we will be interacting with new students who have moved here, international students, freshmen, um, in hopes of saying, hey, there's all this stuff going on. There's the parties, there's the drinking, there's the fraternities and sororities, but you don't have to do that. Here's a community of people that are rooted in the reality that God is the God, the creator of the universe, yes. and he loves you and he desires to know you, and you don't have to do these things. You can be with us and be loved, and be received. And so, thank you for your prayers. Um, I know many of you have been praying for my wife, Jessamine, and her health, and we uh, just appreciate all your love and support that you have given to her. Uh, she, she has been making improvements, and um, we are just so thankful for God's faithfulness there. All of our three children are healthy, and um, we continue just one day at a time, trusting in God's faithfulness and provision. So thank you all for your love and your prayers and support for Chi Alpha in Boulder, Colorado. Chi Alpha uh, stands for Christ's ambassadors. From that Bible verse, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. And we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, we just like to pray for you, and uh, we know that you meet people from all over the world, and you are there so that you can share the gospel of Jesus Christ with these students who will someday be leaders. And so the seeds that you plant in their lives are very important, and the love that you share with them that they know that uh, their world is bigger than what they can think. And so we just want to pray for you. Father God, we're so grateful for our young brother. We're so grateful for the burden that you've placed upon his heart. Lord, we thank you that they are examples of your grace and your care and concern for them. They may not know what their future may hold. But Father God, we pray that you will just continue to embold Eric and his wife and his family to be a blessing to those that you bring into the sphere of their influence. Father, we thank you that you have demonstrated to them over and over and over again that you're concerned about every facet of their lives. And Father, we pray that you will continue to enlarge uh, the ministry and that there will be other families that will support these uh, young people, give them a place, a haven to come to, that they might know that you care for them. Father, we ask that you will continue to order his steps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you, man. Love bless you. you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If you could turn to your first hymn, God of Our Fathers. 
many slides as you are able. silent prayer. Thank you for your grace. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, 
You can say that. <sighs> Amen. <laughs> now it's, it's a time to uh, really consider your need. And we serve a great God that meets every person's need. The scripture says, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, if you have a need, this is very simple. I'm just going to ask you as we pray, just to put your hand on your heart. And I'm going to pray. Your needs may be unspoken. I'm not asking you to voice what that need is. But I'm just asking in a way of faith that we pray together, asking God to meet the needs of our heart. Eternal God, our Father, we are so grateful that you alone are worthy of all praise because you love us with a love that is difficult for us to really comprehend when we're having difficulty loving ourselves. Father, we pray that you will touch us right where we need to be touched this morning. Thank you for your grace and your long suffering for all you've ever desired of our life is that we would know you Touch us wherever the infirmity is. We ask your blessings. Father, as you've taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever father we pray for Bob Murray we pray Lord for your anointing to fall afresh upon him. Thank you, Lord, that you have kept him, that you have preserved his life, and that you will further use him for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. And let us join together in song.
stand for the doxology? Father God, who graciously bestows upon us blessings upon blessings. Father, we pray that as we lift these offerings to you, and as we've given out of our abundance and out of our need, Father, we pray that they may be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. In your bulletin, uh, it says the offertory song is going to be a song called The Strength is Perfect. But the strength is perfect. But we will be singing that another time. Because um, it is, I, I hate to say that our regular accompanist, uh, Catherine Ellisir, and both of her daughters are unfortunately ill today. So um, one, one daughter and Catherine both have COVID. It's going on as you know. And the other one is just sick with a stuffy nose and we just don't want that scene to happen like that today. So Nina, uh, my Bible student, is going to be coming up and performing the piece that was listed as the uh, prelude music today, which is Titus by Jewel Nelson.
Do you know why I ask you to pray and put your hands over your heart? It was biblical. The Bible says, out of your heart are the issues of life. I don't do things just to do things. But out of our hearts are the issues of life. We're so grateful that we have you and God puts us in family and I'm so glad that I have the privilege of serving with great people. Amen. With great people. Amen. Not just good people, but great people that God has brought into our lives. And it gives me a privilege and an honor to um, introduce to some of you our president, the president of our chapel, Hal Hollick. And he's going to present the um, wonderful contributions that many of you have made and will make in the future as we try to expand the ministry of the chapel to reach children and families and nations. And he's going to present a scholarship to uh, a wonderful lady. Al. Yes, I'm on. I'm going to share a little story with you that uh, the majority up here know very well. But some of us out in the congregation may not. Months ago, many months ago, Mark, during one of the uh, choir's uh, committee meeting, made the suggestion that perhaps the chapel choir could find a way to raise funds, make a scholarship program for deserving young students, and help get our message out to the community. Well, what I was told by the committee, you're the one who brought the, let's not argue this point. Let's, let's not delay the process. For many months, they worked diligently to put together an acceptable program, application process. They decided that the choir executive committee, for lack of a better description, raise your hands if you're on that committee, okay? They would review the applications, vet the applicants, conduct interviews with the applicants so that we could come up with a scholarship to a deserving student. You notice I said A. During the process, we were blessed with two applications that rose to the top. Even though the two students had different academic lives, courses of study, different musical talents, the applications were virtually identical. And a decision could not be made between the two. Wow. They came back to the chapel board, said, what do we do? We, we have a dilemma, not a problem, a dilemma. And of course, I said, 
Well, we need to make a choice. And then I thought about it overnight, prayed on it. They said, no, we want to make two scholarships available. Praise God. Because we were so blessed with the quality of talent that we were presented with to make that decision. It is now my honor to reintroduce Nina. We would have had Kaylin here too, but COVID got in the way. So each of them, Nina, if you would come up, please. On behalf of Pastor Bill, because he signed this, <laughs> and on behalf of the Village's Chapel Choir, I am pleased to present you with a certificate of scholarship. Let me show the, there is a certificate, okay. <laughs> and congratulate you on your, does anybody doubt the ability that this young lady has for this? No? Right. Congratulations, sweetie, and good luck in your future studies. I know Mark will take care of you on the, <laughs> but he doesn't have much more work to do, though, <laughs> from what we saw today. And had it have been uh, not for the COVID illness we would have had, we have the identical thing for uh, Kaylin as well, and many of you know them. So, again, are we blessed with the two candidates? Pastor Bill? We just want to uh, pray over her life. Yes. God has gifted her, and the world needs to experience her gift. I was very moved by your playing. I want you to know that. <laughs> and... Um, I'm sure the congregation was moved as well. Yeah. Father God, I am so grateful that Jesus, when you rose from the grave and ascended, you gave gifts not only to men, but to women as well. Father, I pray your anointing on her life I pray, Lord, that you will bring her before kings and queens with this gift that you have blessed her with. Father, I ask that you will meet every single need, and I pray your protection of the seen and unseen world. And Lord, I ask that you will continue to bless her family and those individuals who have been embraced by her presence. Lord, keep her in the center of your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Am I still on my... One other thing, and that's that accounts have been opened in the finance department of each respective school. So the money's already there, and it's available to you yeah. to support in your book expenses and uh, whatever else may come up for this year. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. They didn't need me in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Kaylin's. Okay. You, you want Kaylin's? Sure. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Mark will see that Kaylin gets her certificates. And, and I'm sure many of you are wondering, well, how much was it? Did anybody have that question? Yes. Yeah, what school? What school? San Jose State and... Uh, and Santa Clara, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 So Nina might be back. Yeah. Hopefully. 
uh, I could say nanya <laughs> as far as how much it was, but it was a thousand dollars. It's a beginning. We can do better. Amen. Each. We can do better. Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, that you have a people in this world who are lights in the darkness. And Father, we pray that you will use each and every one of them to bring hope to the hopeless and help to the helpless. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Now we're getting ready to prepare for communion. Am I right about that? I just want to make sure. But I'm not going to ask you to come yet. I have a word that the Lord gave me this morning, fresh, a fresh word before we go into communion. And uh, for those of you that have a tea time, um, you'll be late maybe just for a few minutes. Now, if God has, our, has become our Savior, and if the Spirit of God has been sealed in us as believers, and if the word of God is true, and I believe it is true, Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works in us, in you, in me, to do what? If God is in us, working in us, to do what? His good pleasure. If he is working in us, and if Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. If God is working in us, giving us the will to do good, and if it is for his glory and his good, stop the complaining. If he is working in you to will, to do his good work, stop complaining. That was the old life. That was the old person. The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And in this new life, we become a people of praise and thanksgiving because God is working in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. to please him. And sometimes it may not feel good that he's working on you and working in you. He needs to move some things around, move some things out of the way, cause things to come out of you so that you could be a better tool for him, a better instrument for him. Stop the complaining. Because if he is working in you, you should be saying thank you. Hello, somebody. You should be saying praise God that he loves me that much that he is at work in my heart, even though I may not be able to see it. Because we're people that like to see things. We like to know things, but his knowledge is beyond ours. But know that God is working in you to perfect you, to be a holy representation of himself. 
He wants to bring all of that goodness out of your life because he has invested his good spirit in you and in me. His Holy Spirit. Because without holiness, we can't get to heaven. We can't see the Lord. So let us, as people who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, be thankful all the time. That's the success to my life. For 56 years since my conversion, I have made a habit of thanking God, praising the Lord. People may not understand it. They may not welcome it. But I know who I belong to. Father, we pray for this communion table. And we pray for these symbols that represent your body and your blood that was shed for us. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, as we participate, Lord, may it bring healing to our hurt. May it restore and renew our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Communion is open to every person that has a relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't say you cannot have this supper because you're not a member of this community. Every born-again believer is encouraged to have communion. I'm going to ask those individuals who are serving to come at this time. probably don't hear it enough. I love you, Brooks. I love you, Cindy. I love you, Susie. I love you, Roberta. I love you, Hal. And God has made us family. And I'm so grateful that you choose to serve us as we serve you. And as you serve this community, Father, I pray your blessings on these servers today. Lord, may their cups overflow with your loving kindness and your gentle mercies, Lord. I pray that they will never lack because they know who they serve. Lord, as they come to the table to receive and to distribute, may they bring blessings to those in our midst. Amen. Father, we pray the blessings over this bread that represents your body that was broken for us. Lord, we ask that you restore healing to the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the people. 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 
we ask you to hold the element that represents the bread that we may partake together. Good things take time. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Father God, we lift this token of your body. Father, thank you for your body that you submitted, that was bruised, that was abused, that was tormented, that we would never experience that. We lift this in Jesus' name, and we take together. Father, we pray for this cup that represents your blood that was shed for us for the remissions of our sins. Thank you, Lord, that we can be made whole because of your great sacrificial love gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the people. Bless the people.
bless the people. Bless the people. Bless the people. sins are covered by his blood your 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 sins are covered by his blood Father God, we lift our cup before you that represents your blood that was shed that we might have remissions of sins. Sins that are cast in the sea of forgetfulness and remembered no more. We take and drink in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I finally got a prayer answered. Well, yeah. Uh, the other day, I was laying in my bed. And all of a sudden, on green, three. Yes, I am. I have the Lord's permission. 
Green Three is where I live. The Green Three is backed up by where I live. And I heard in the distance somebody dropped the H bomb. <laughs> the H bomb. Hallelujah! And I got up to see where it came from, and somebody was scurrying across in their golf cart. I didn't see who it was. But I had an idea. So I made a phone call. You know who it was? It was Hal. <laughs> So I am so grateful that he's making a difference and other people will be making a difference when they come to hole three and, and they probably will do a better job at putting that ball in the hole. Let us pray. Let us stand. Father God, we're so grateful for your loving kindness and your tender mercies, Lord, that are renewed day by day, moment by moment. Lord, we are blessed beyond measure. We ask that you will use each one of us for the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ in flesh, in these bodies of clay. Let us represent you in all that we do and everywhere we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, my darling daughter. God bless you. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, choir. You're sounding ever so youthful. I don't know what it is. It must be the Mastro. <laughs> God bless all of those of you who are serving and uh, thank you so much for your presence today. God bless you. Let us sing our benediction.